buckle up because today's deep dive is going to seriously rock your reality. We're taking on physicist Tom Campbell's mind-blowing idea that we're all living in a virtual reality. And not just any virtual reality, a virtual reality generated by consciousness itself. We're exploring two excerpts from Campbell, his YouTube video transcript, Tom Campbell, The Logic of Virtual Reality, and a PDF from another talk, video titled Tom Campbell's Science Math and My Big TOE. Okay, so let's unpack this. Campbell starts by throwing down a pretty bold claim. He says that logic is the real engine of scientific breakthroughs, even more so than math. What's fascinating here is how Campbell sees math as a tool, but not the starting point. He argues that those huge e shifts in our understanding, like realizing the Earth is round, began with a new way of thinking, a new logic. Imagine trying to navigate a flat Earth versus understanding it's a sphere. That shift in thinking, that's where the real breakthrough lies. So it's like that light bulb moment when you suddenly see things differently. Mm. And math is just the language we use to describe that new view, right? Exactly. Think about the information age. It wasn't complex equations that got it started, but the very concept of using information in a new way. Math was essential to its development, but the seed was a logical leap. Okay, so how does this logic-first approach lead Campbell to this whole virtual reality idea? This is where it gets really interesting. Campbell takes this idea of logic as fundamental and applies it to the very fabric of our reality. He argues that our reality is a virtual reality, and consciousness is the fundamental stuff it's made of. It's like we're players in a massive video game, and our consciousness is interacting with a virtual environment created by a larger consciousness system. So our bodies are basically just avatars in this grand cosmic video game. And what's this about a larger consciousness system? Who or what is running the simulation? That's the million-dollar question, and Campbell proposes it all comes down to the nature of consciousness itself. He describes consciousness as an information system. And like any good system, it evolves by reducing entropy. Okay, hold on. Entropy. For those of us who haven't brushed up on our physics lately, what does that even mean? Imagine a messy room. High entropy. Now picture a perfectly organized one. Low entropy. Campbell believes consciousness evolves by creating order by reducing entropy. And this virtual reality, with all its challenges and complexities, is the perfect training ground for our consciousness to evolve. So the more we learn and experience in this virtual reality, the more our consciousness evolves, and in turn, the larger consciousness system evolves along with us. That's a pretty wild feedback loop. Exactly. And according to Campbell, the virtual reality setup is incredibly efficient for this kind of growth. Think about it. The physical world throws ethical dilemmas, moral choices, and all sorts of curveballs our way. All those experiences, those decisions, they help our consciousness evolve. It's like we're constantly being challenged to level up. Okay, I'm starting to see how this virtual reality model fits with Campbell's emphasis on logic. Hmm. But does he explain how this model actually works in a practical sense? How is this reality being generated? He does. Imagine a computer constantly generating a stream of data. That data is the raw material of our reality. Our consciousness, the player in this grand simulation, receives and interprets that data as the physical world around us. So we're not interacting with physical matter in the traditional sense. It's more like we're receiving a constant stream of information that our consciousness then interprets and experiences as physical reality. But why go through all this trouble? Why create a virtual reality in the first place? Why not just exist as pure consciousness? That gets to the heart of Campbell's argument. He suggests that this virtual reality, with all its rules and complexities, allows for a specific kind of growth, a specific kind of evolution of consciousness. It's like a cosmic boot camp designed to help us reach our full potential. Okay, that's a pretty mind-blowing concept. We're not just talking about a video game here. We're talking about the very nature of reality itself. But if we're all just players in this virtual world, what about free will? Do we have any agency in this game, or are we just following a pre-programmed script? That's a question a lot of people ask, and Campbell addresses it head on. But before we dive into the implications of free will, we need to talk about another key element of Campbell's model, the concept of a future probability database. It's a bit of a brain bender, but it's crucial to understanding how our choices influence this virtual reality. All right, so before we got sidetracked, we were venturing into the territory of free will, and now we're talking about a future probability database. It's a lot to process. Can you remind me how this database fits into Campbell's virtual reality model? It's all about how the system manages possibilities, how it keeps this grand simulation running smoothly. 
Imagine instead of meticulously calculating every single outcome, the system has this database of potential futures, each with its own probability of occurring. So it's like the system has a bag full of different colored marbles, and each marble represents a possible future. Some marbles are more common than others, making those futures more likely. Yeah, exactly. And every choice we make, every action we take, it's like we're pulling a marble out of that bag and influencing which future becomes our present. Okay, that's a really cool way to visualize it. But if our choices are pulling these probability marbles, does that mean we actually have free will in this virtual reality? Uh -huh. Or are we still just puppets on a string, even if those strings are made of probability? Campbell would say it's a bit of both. He argues that while the system is primarily deterministic, meaning things generally follow a set of rules, it also incorporates this probability element to simplify things to allow for flexibility and growth. So it's like the system lays down the basic rules of the game, but within those rules, we have the freedom to make choices that influence the direction of the game itself. You got it. And this is where it gets really wild. Campbell believes that we can actually tap into this future probability database get a glimpse of those potential futures through our intuition. Wait, are we talking about premonitions and psychic abilities here? <laughs> because I once had this dream. Hold on, not quite premonitions in the traditional sense. Think of it more like accessing information, like tapping into a vast network of possibilities. Campbell argues that those gut feelings we get, those intuitive leaps that seem to come from nowhere, might actually be glimpses into this future probability database. So that feeling you get when you just know something is right, or that sense of dread that washes over you for no apparent reason, those could be flashes of insight from this database. Exactly. It's like our consciousness is constantly receiving information, not just about the present moment, but also about the potential futures that lie ahead. This whole concept of intuition is fascinating. Yeah. It makes you wonder about the nature of time in this virtual reality. If we can catch glimpses of the future, does that mean it's already written? That's a question that has puzzled philosophers and physicists for centuries. But in Campbell's model, the future isn't fixed. It's fluid, constantly shifting and evolving based on the choices made by all the players in this grand simulation. So it's like that saying, life is what you make it, takes on a whole new meaning in this context. We're not just shaping our individual lives, we're contributing to the evolution of the entire system with every choice we make. Precisely. And Campbell believes this evolution is pushing us towards greater complexity, greater interconnectedness, and ultimately greater understanding. That makes me think about the Akashic Records, that mystical concept of a universal library containing all knowledge and experience. Is Campbell suggesting that this future probability database is like a scientific explanation for the Akashic Records? It's an intriguing connection, isn't it? The Akashic Records are often described as a repository of all past, present, and future knowledge. And while Campbell doesn't explicitly equate the two, he does suggest that we have access to information beyond our immediate perception that our consciousness is part of a much larger network of consciousness. So we're all interconnected, all contributing to this vast web of information and experience, and potentially tapping into it through our intuition. It's both beautiful and a bit terrifying at the same time. It certainly challenges us to reconsider our place in the universe and the power of our choices. But Campbell's model doesn't just offer a mind-bending perspective on consciousness and reality. He also uses it to tackle some of the most perplexing mysteries in physics, particularly in the realm of quantum mechanics. Like what? Give me an example. This is where my brain usually starts to fry. Take the classic thought experiment, Schrodinger's cat. It's a head scratcher that often gets used to highlight the strangeness of quantum physics. But Campbell suggests that his virtual reality model actually makes this paradox disappear. Give me, kid. Yeah. Now you have to explain that one. For those of us who haven't quite wrapped our heads around quantum physics, how does a virtual reality explain a cat that's both dead and alive? This is where I really need those ELI-5 analogies. You got it. Imagine this. You're playing a video game and there's a cat in a sealed box. The game doesn't need to decide whether the cat is alive or dead until you, the player, open the box. It's only when you observe it that the system renders a specific outcome. So it's not that the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. It's that the system hasn't rendered a definitive state until the player interacts with it. Exactly. It's all about efficiency. Why waste precious processing power on details that aren't relevant to the player's experience? Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's like the game is constantly optimizing itself, only showing us what we need to see when we need to see it. But does this same logic apply to other quantum weirdness, like the double slit experiment? It does, but that experiment is a whole other can of quantum worms. We'll dive into that after a quick break. All right.
those quantum worms you mentioned before the break, we were talking about Schrodinger's cat and how Campbell's model says it's not really about a cat in two states at once, but rather the system just being super efficient. So how does that same logic apply to something like the double slit experiment? That one always felt like a magic trick to me. Right. The double slit experiment is another one of those quantum head scratchers that makes perfect sense in a virtual reality. Remember how we were talking about the system only rendering what's necessary for the player's experience? Yeah, like the game doesn't need to decide if the cat is dead or alive until someone opens the box. Exactly. Well, the double slit experiment is like the system saying, I don't need to decide which slit the particle goes through until someone's looking. It's all about probabilities until an observation is made. Okay, walk me through this. Okay. For those of us who forgot high school physics, remind us what the double slit experiment is and why it's such a big deal. So imagine you've got a wall with two slits in it. You start shooting tiny particles like electrons at the wall. Now, if these were just little marbles, you'd expect them to go through one slit or the other, right? Makes sense to me. But here's where it gets weird. When you don't observe which slit the electrons go through, they create this wave-like interference pattern on a screen behind the wall. It's like each electron is going through both slits at the same time, interfering with itself. Right? Like it can't decide which path to take, so it somehow takes both. That's the part that always blew my mind. And that's the part that points to a reality beyond our everyday understanding. But in Campbell's model, this isn't some strange quantum paradox. It's just the system working as designed. So how does the virtual reality angle explain this wave-particle duality thing? It sounds like the electron is playing both sides. It's not that the electron is being sneaky. It's that the system, being super efficient, doesn't bother rendering a definite path until an observation forces it to take. Think of it like this. The system has a bag of possible outcomes, and each choice, each observation, pulls one out. So until you look, it's like the electron is a wave of probability spread out across all possible paths. Then when you observe it, you're essentially forcing it to choose a single path, collapsing that probability wave. Exactly. The act of observation is like the player saying, OK, game, I need to see what happens here. And the system responds by rendering a specific outcome. Wow. So we're not just passively observing reality. We're actively participating in shaping it with every observation, every choice we make. Now you're getting it. And that's one of the most profound implications of Campbell's model. If our reality is a virtual reality and consciousness is the player, then our choices have a real impact on the game itself. So if we consistently choose to focus on the positive, on collaboration and understanding, could we actually influence the entire system in a positive direction? Campbell would say that it's not about wishing things into existence, but rather about shifting those probabilities, nudging the system towards a more positive future. Our intentions, our choices, they all feed back into that future probability database we talked about earlier. This is heavy stuff. Yeah. So much to think about. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the logic of virtual reality to quantum mechanics and the power of consciousness. And hey, you know, it's really got me thinking. If reality is like a game, Maybe we should be focusing on leveling up our consciousness, right? What do you think? Absolutely. And who knows what amazing abilities we might unlock along the way. Maybe Campbell is onto something truly groundbreaking with this virtual reality idea. It's a perspective that challenges us to rethink everything we thought we knew about the world and our place in it. It's definitely a mind-bending journey, that's for sure. Well, folks, we've reached the end of another deep dive. A huge thank you to our expert for taking us on this incredible journey through Tom Campbell's model of reality. Until next time, keep those minds open and keep questioning everything.